Okay. All right, y'all, get in here, get in here, get in here. We are back. We are back. We are back. Now, let me tell y'all, I did okay with my breakfast, but not the best. I didn't finish it, but I'll say I ate about half of my eggs. I ate, I didn't eat none of the um, English muffin, but I was able to eat some of the potatoes. So I did good and drank part of my juice. Yeah, I did good. I did really, really good today. So yay me, okay? Y'all know breakfast ain't my thing, but I did my best. But I'm glad that y'all hit the like button. I'm glad that y'all came back. Hopefully everybody else figures out that we're in here. Um, I know it ain't always easy because YouTube does not send out the notifications like that. And that's cool. You know what I mean? But we in here, we in here. So we're going to get into what's going on with um, this foolishness, okay? Uh, one, we're going to discuss Ashley Darby, her gaslighting, her lies, and the fact that apparently she thinks we, that we, the viewing public, are as dumb as she looks. So we got to deal with that because no ma'am, no ma'am Pam. No ma'am, no ham, no turkey, no chitlins. I don't know what she thought this was, but it's not that. And that ain't this. So we got to deal with that. Um, Mia Thornton. Mia Thornton. Mia Thornton, I believe, has pulled another Mia Thornton. Now, that's what I believe. I believe that Mia Thornton has indeed pulled another Mia Thornton on us. And quite frankly, I'm suspecting that G is in on it. Now, I didn't know him to be just an out-and-out -out liar, but then I had to remember, we've seen him do this before. We've seen him do this before. So we're going to discuss that, too. And then this issue with the Baltimore Bridge situation, oh, we're going to talk about it. Oh, we're going to talk about it. Um, I had an experience online um, on, on an Instagram post that was very, very interesting. It was super, super interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to talk about all of that, all of the things, all of them. So let me greet who's here, y'all. Please hit your like button. Please put your like number in the chat. Um, I'm definitely playing my game today. So if I ask you who has a like number, please understand you got 60 seconds to tell me if it's you. And it and I know how some y'all know how sometimes my baby is here like number one. That's Mama Peanut. Um, y'all know how sometimes like two people will hit the like button at the same time and you end up with the same number. That's real. I can dig it. But I'm going to accept the first person who answers me back in the chat. Fair? Is that fair? I hope it's fair. Okay. Because God bless me and I want to do some blessing. Okay. My baby is like number one and she's asking y'all to please hit the like button for her mama. Miss Thelma is number two. All right. Jojo is number four. Hey, boo. How are you? How are you? Okay. Jojo, what you say? You say you right, Nitro. That bridge collapse was intentional. Hmm. The Diddy news is a big distraction. Facts. And people need to wake up and see what's going on for real. I know, but girl, will they ever is the question. Hey, Queena. What's up, sis? Alfreda. Frida. Hey, girl. Thank you for being number five. I'm glad you're here. I am. I am. We got my other baby here, the beautiful Bianca Edwards. My baby, my baby. She said, y'all hit that like button. Get your water in your headphones. Yes, we about to talk, honey, and get into it. Queena is number six. I thank you. My good sis, Jackie Gaines, is number five. I appreciate you, girl. I'm so glad you're here. I know you be busy, but I'm glad you made it. We got DV at number seven. What up, DV? Debbie Garcia is in the house, so you know it is legal to talk housewives, and we going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I got my place on the porch, like number eight. Okay, for new beginnings. Yes, that eight is new beginnings. Yes, it is. You my girl. Okay. Say new beginnings without Rob and let's hope RoboCop. Ooh, ooh, girl, you saw the thumbnail. 
<laughs> I need to stop being silly, but I won't. I won't. Have no fear. Silly today. I'll be silly tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Hey, Tracy Lashley. She's like number 12. And I appreciate it. All right. Delicia Dismuke is number 10. Hey, sis. How you doing? DS coming in at number 12. My Jen Bunny is here. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, Jenny Patterson. She's number 14. Renee Six is number 13. I appreciate you. I do. I do. Hey, Fresh Strawberries. How you doing? I'm so happy we got you here. Malaya Lachelle. Oh, hey, happy hump day. Yours said number one, too. You and my baby had number one. I like it. I like it. Queen of Hearts KS is number 20. Hey, sis. D. Serratinas is number 13. Hey, what's going down? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Deeper 904 is number 27. Divine is number 28. Cool Gamer is always cool. Always in the building. We glad to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who else we got up in here? Up in here. Up in here. Cha. Wait a minute. Y'all, I hate when I get 800 number calls. I ain't got no friends with no 800 numbers. Okay. Quiet Storm 87. Hey, now. Thank you for being number 34. Good to see you. Legina the Jackson is number 14. Good to see you. Lady Blue. Hey, boo. Thank you for being number 10. Wicked 548. Baby, we don't get to see you often. I miss you. Thank you for being like number 35. X, thank you for being 36. Yvette, my sis, from all the way over there in Birmingham, UK. She is in the house, and we appreciate you. Okay, I'm so glad you made it. She's number 36 as well. Okay, Auntie Eva is here. She's number 39. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right. Who else we got up in here? Who else is up in here? Because I don't want to miss nobody. When I start talking, I probably ain't going to stop for a minute because it's some things going on. Hey, Miss Thelma. All right. All right. So look. As people come in, make sure y'all are greeting people. If you if we see anyone new or if you are the new person and you've not been here before, um, please, 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 please um, let us know that you're new and put First Time Live or FTL for First Time Live so that we can welcome you because we want to do just that. Happy to be happy. Thank you for being number 41. Callie is in the house. Thank you for being number 40, pretty girl. Good to see you. Um, so listen, make sure you let us know so we can welcome you. If y'all see somebody that you've not seen before, even if it's not their first time, greet them anyway. It makes people feel good. Everybody wants to be, you know, feel welcome and not just tolerated. So let's make sure that we are doing just that. Sweet beloved. Hey, now. Thank you for being number 37. I appreciate you. All right. Um, it, Y'all, it's not um, happy to be happy birthday. She just be writing a like number like that. I don't know why, but that's how she writes a like number. But yes, it's not her birthday. So listen, y'all, let's get into what's going on. Mm hmm. So I got some things that we got to get into. So we're going to be doing a whole lot of screen sharing and whatever. So y'all make sure, please, that your sound is up simply because I don't know for sure how loud the um, the sound on some of the stuff is, especially when we have to go to, oh, happy to be happy, girl, you fine. Um, especially when we have to go to Instagram because some of those posts are loud. Some of them are not. So that's why I'm always reminding y'all, turn your sound up. I'm getting ready to share that screen again. Um, we're going to get it. We're going to dig into Ashley Funky behind Bar Barty, uh, Darby, whatever the hell her name is. We're going to deal with forehead, Pennywise, Mega Man, the brain. We're going to deal with her first. She's going to be the first order of business. Because by the time we get to that Baltimore Bridge, honey, whoo. There's so many things that we got to address. There are so, so, so many things that we got to address. So we're going to deal with that first. Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with that first. And um, yeah, we're going to go from there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like that. Like that, like that. Miss Nisi, thank you so much for being number 45. I appreciate you. Yeah, it, 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 child was a mess. It's not was a mess. It's currently a mess and about to be a bigger mess. And I don't think that the public at large understands how much of a mess that's about to be. And this is one time where our people, Black folks, had better to take close notice because when certain things start to hit and they start to hit hard, mm, we feel it the worst because economically, we are right out, right on the bottom rung. So when things go bad, they go bad for us first and they go bad for us worse. So do not allow anybody to tell you that, oh, we shouldn't care. We should just believe whatever they tell. No, no, no. And hell no. Because by the time you're working hard and you're planning and you're plotting and you are strategizing and scheming to put people who look like me at an extreme disadvantage for your own gains, I got something to say. Hey, Kashari, girl, you've been gone for a minute. All right. Thank you for being like number 47. And Jeanette Porter, you hit it at the same time. You're number 47. Thank you. Thank you. All right. God's anointed daughter, you back, sis. All right. But like I said, we're going to deal with Ashley Big Forehead um, Darby first. We're going to deal with her first. We'll get to the bridge last because I want to take my time with that. It's too much mess to it. It's too much mess to it. And I don't really like people, you know, pissing on my foot and telling me it's raining. God's anointed daughter, thank you for being number 50. So, like I said, let's pull this up first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all, I got a whole hymn stuck in my head. I'm talking about old school, too. What a friend we have in Jesus. I don't know why it's stuck in my head. And I don't mean nothing jazzed up. I'm talking about the old school, straight out the book version is what's stuck in my head. Like, it's, it's really real at this moment, y'all. And I don't know why. I guess it's a good sign. It could be worse songs stuck in my head. I could have, you know, a whole lot of stuff stuck in my head. So I guess that ain't the worst. Not guess. I know that ain't the worst. So let's let's dig into forehead. Y'all ready? Hey, Miss Gardner. That's my sis. She's like number 48. I appreciate you. I'm glad you made it. You working and listening? All right. So for all of y'all working and listening, make sure that you got your headphones in. Remember, if you have to laugh, pretend to cough or sneeze okay because you know while we drag her just a smidge we may tell a joke or two so i'm just warning you be prepared to fake a laugh or fake a sneeze okay that's all i'm saying you love that song girl that thing is stuck in my head like all morning long it's just what a friend we have I, like it's bad it's bad it's just do 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 it won't go <laughs> it won't leave it won't leave what can I do it won't go what must I do can everybody see hey Callie Dream thank you for being 56 you got your earbuds in okay that's what I'm talking about alright 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 so let's go let's go Earbuds in, y'all. Let's take off. I've said and will repeatedly say, I don't condone fighting. I just don't do it. Like, we talk, we yell, we say things with our words. You know, my castmates and I have all gone toe-to-toe -to -toe at some point in time. I've never, ever thought to use my hands. It's not that way. So for the actions that happened that night, they are not in alignment with who I am. They are not.
otherwise, but yeah, I just, just don't get to happen that way. Aftermath and that's, that's it. I'm an adult. You've never seen me put a hand on anybody. Okay. I'll never spank my children and I'll, I'll never put hands on anybody who doesn't touch me first. And that's just that. So, so the reason that I asked for the cameras to rolling is because when the cameras are up, we can only play cleared music. People were like, hey, so we were like, okay, y'all. So I'm asking, can I tell the DJ to start playing some Drop It Like It's Hot music? That's what I wanted. Everybody wanted to clap some cheeks, you know, which, oh gosh, let me take that back. That's not what I meant to say. But you know, everybody wanted to dance, okay? So that's why I asked that. That's Clear music is music that has been approved by uh, Bravo and Truly Original. Um, so that's... Uh, um, but that is the reason that I asked, are the cameras still rolling? Because we wanted to play some different music. I had no other intentions aside from that. I've said and repeatedly say, I don't condone fighting. I just don't do it. Like, we talk, we yell, we say things with our words. You know, my castmates and I have all gone toe-to-toe -to -toe at some point in time. I've never, ever thought to use my hands. I'm just not that way. So for the actions that happened that night, they are not in alignment with who I am. They are not in alignment with what I believe. And I could never have anticipated that that would happen. Um, I know a lot of people think otherwise, but yeah, I just don't get down like that. I don't roll with it. It's unfortunate. So y'all heard her lie. Ain't no need to hear her lie a second time. We don't need to hear it. We don't need to hear the lie twice. We, we heard it the first time, didn't we? I mean, I heard her lie the first time. I don't think we need to hear her lie for a second time. It just doesn't make sense to me. So let's talk about what this hooligan actually did say. Let's talk about what the hooligan said, okay? So what she did say, um, Tracy Dash just said, why would you invite somebody who lied on two of your friend's husband? The fact that you're still friends with her says something about you. Not only that, don't y'all forget that just last year she said that her friends don't lie, even though the cameras and when they roll tape, it indicated that your friends do indeed lie. But that's what she said. My friends don't lie. Okay. She said that. All right. My baby said, y'all hit the engagement button, the circle on the bottom right hand side of your um, screen, the circle with the emoji, send up the bubbles, let them know y'all in here is breaking up. Is it breaking? Is it still breaking up real bad? Were y'all able to hear her at all? Do I need to run it back? Let me know. Yeah. She's super whack. She's super whack. Super, super, super wet. And for me, for me, it's the lies. It's the I don't believe you. Girl, let's talk about all the problems, okay? First of all, Lord Malaya says she don't believe her or her chin. Yvette says she, what? Whatever Ashley acting all innocent with her ever-growing Natalie Nunn chin. Listen, she can't have the forehead and the chin. The forehead, you know that there was a lot of chin on that picture. There was a lot of chin on that picture, and I'm going to give you that because that's that's true. She's trying to save her job, but she don't need it. Not Jay Leno. Ashley's trash. She brought inside, and she brought inside of the building instead of leaving it outside. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Deborah did what Ashley was afraid to do, and I believe she did what Ashley asked her to do. Oh, y'all heard it, Evie? Okay. Quiet Storm says she knew her ghetto friend came there with an agenda. I believe she asked her ghetto friend to come there with an agenda. I believe it. Kelly said asking about the cameras was Deborah's cue to approach Candace. Candace, Wendy, and Kiana were on the other side minding their business. That's true. Nobody was saying nothing. Them people dancing and having a good time. Monique C said is number 61. Hey, boo, how are you? Um, Evie said, I can believe she didn't tell her to do it, but I believe you knew. Okay, well, it could. You're right. Maybe she didn't tell her to, but she knew what that girl was coming there to do, and I believe she alerted the others, and I think they already had a game plan for how they were going to blame Candace for being attacked, because I think they knew full well that girl came there to attack her. Cloud9, thank you for being 61. What's up? Glad you're here. So, um, yeah, that happened. <laughs> that happened. So now, hold on. Let's talk about what this hooker said. She don't agree with putting hands on yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. 
Mm-hmm. Now, while if I'm um, being fair down the middle, yeah, I think it was definitely a setup for sure. Miriam Sanfleur, thank you for being number 62. Okay. Right. She definitely did not tell her not to. I think she knew ahead of time, did not tell her not to. And I think she decided that to let the rest of them know. And you can tell by their actions after the fact that they had already discussed how to spin that attack on Candace and make it her fault. And oh, it was her mouth. Oh, she cuts to the white meat. She says too much. She goes too far only for Candace not to give them a show that night. Like, as you right, Ashley been lying since season one. You're right. But um, Candace really did not give them the show they wanted. She did not. Like, the whole season, she simply didn't. Neither did Wendy. Neither did Karen. No, not quite. That's not quite the same speech from the last fight. It's not. Debbie Garcia says they were setting up Candace, and they were. And they were, sis. So, Listen. Let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about what went on, okay? What she said. She said that she does not condone fighting or whatever like that. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, you say that, but if we're being fair and down the middle. Now, according to Ashley, this is according to what she said. She claims she don't condone that, blah, blah, blah. And that's why she had to pause her friendship with D Bora with Grover. Okay. Now, what do we know about this situation that doesn't quite add up? Now, when Candace and um, Monique got into an altercation, okay, I need to know who's like number 85 right now. It's 33 after. I'll give y'all the 35 after. Who's like number 85? Um, When that happened, now th this situation, she claims that sh she paused her friendship with Deborah because she said that making a mistake was one thing, but then the antagonizing on social media was why she said she can't she can't roll with that. She's not down with that. She don't roll with that, right? I and don't you just love how she gets extra colloquial? when it's time to um, pretend to be sincere. Mm? And I do mean pretend heavy, heavy on the pretend, okay? So with that being said, if y'all recall, after Monique um, shifted Candace's wig, and I'm saying that to be very, just being fair, Ms. Weedy Pooh, thank you for being 72. Um, just being fair, I did feel as though Monique was in the right as much as Candace was in the right on that evening because both of them participated. They were both acting like idiots. They were both arguing. Um, Candace walked away, turned around, came back. She closed space to get back in Monique's face. Monique said, get your hand out my face. She did not remove the hand from the face. Monique flipped the hair and then they, you know, got to scrapping and hair pulling and what and, and popping and stuff. Okay. But after that happened, we all recall that not only did Monique do a little bit of jabbing online, Monique wrote a whole diss song called Drag Queens, okay? Because she drug her. She's like, you asked for it and I gave it to you and blah, blah, blah. We knew she was referring to Candace saying, drag me, Monique. And then Monique proceeded to drag her, okay? So I had no problem with the dragon of Candace. Didn't didn't because i feel like when people say get your hand out their face you might want to listen i feel it's like i feel as though if you walking away why would you turn around and come all the way back unless you really wants to get to scrapping and stuff and i feel like monique was just as wrong because you had too much money in your purse at any given point while you were on that show to be arguing back and forth with candace or anybody and, and behaving in that fashion. And I also felt like Candace and Monique both were played by Team Yellow because they did not want you two black girls who both had coin to be friends. They wanted y'all to beef. They did not want y'all to be a dynamic duo and you both fell for it, okay? So let me be very clear. 
I'm not picking either side. They were both equally right. They was both equally wrong for different reasons, in my opinion. But we are talking about Mega Mind, Ashley, at the moment. Ashley, not only was she okay with Monique and the shifting of the wig, she was okay with the social media poking afterwards. She was okay with the social media comments. She was okay with the diss record, Drag Queens, by Monique's alter ego, Carl Hazel. At no point did she pull the, I can't roll with it. I'm not down with that. She didn't do that. So why are you doing that this time? Like, girl, stop telling us different stories and thinking we're going to forget who you are because I'm not. Moving right along to her with this extreme statement of, oh, I don't condone violence and I don't do, and I'm not going to spank my children. Girl, we see that because we saw how bad them little creatures was jumping up and down on tables and on countertops and about to fall and break their neck while you acting like you don't see them. So we know that you don't discipline your children, darling. We know that. It's clear that they're not disciplined. No surprise there. And I was trying to, I, I was really trying to put the two and two together. Like, how does that pertain to this situation? Because number one, nobody accused Ashley of putting her hands on Candace. We're simply saying that you set that girl, set Candace up and put her in a situation for Grover to attack her. That's what you did. Now, moving right along to her giving us this statement about why she wanted to, why she asked, were the cameras down? Mm-hmm. Right. She putting on to distance herself. She's just putting on. And she's trying to distance herself from this girl and, oh, I'm so extremely against violence. I won't even pop my children's behinds when they swinging from the chandeliers like wild primates. Stop putting on. But she goes on to explain that the reason why she asked if the cameras were down was because they wanted to play music that had not been cleared by Bravo. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I was going to believe you, I can't because your tail is there. What did I just tell y'all is Ashley's tail. Anytime she's lying and trying to tell, trying to sell you a story and trying to make you believe she's genuine, what does she do? She puts on a black scent and starts using dialect and colloquialisms to make herself seem relatable and genuine. Who is she doing that for? The black audience, because we're the ones who see through her bull crap. What did she do? Oh, I just asked that because we wanted to play music. There wasn't clear music. You know, they cleared by Bravo because we was ready to clap them cheeks. First of all, sweetheart, your black scent and your use of the dialect is actually off. If you were going to use dialect to try to endear yourselves to, to the black women who are calling you out for, for setting up that attack on that black woman, you probably should have gone to the Urban Dictionary hmm, and found out exactly what clap them cheeks meant. That meant hunching. That ain't got nothing to do with shaking your butt. Now, I understand that girls like you who are not black see our children talk online, our young people talk online, and so you heard seeing people saying that the chill, some, someone had their clappers out or they were shaking their clappers. And so you thought you were clapping cheeks and you thought it was the same thing. Well, guess what, um, Marsha Brady? It is not the same thing. But once again, that is your tell. And I want someone to play this for Ashley Darby so she will know in the future when you lie, we know your tell. When you're lying, that's the only time that you start with the black scent. That is the only time you begin to try to use dialect and colloquialisms. You don't speak that way, Marsha Brady. That's not who you are. Every time you do it, that's how I know you're lying. You have a tell. It is a big tell. It's a big tell. I'm just going to let you know that's how we know. You do it every time. It's like somebody who has a nervous tick when they lie. Like the guy in the hood who always does this when he's telling a lie. That's your tell. And what does she do? We, we wanted to clap them cheeks. 
Really? Okay, Quiet Storm, that's what's up. Say, Ashley, the lies, the lies. Mm hmm. That's all she do. Debbie Garcia says she was trying to revenge the Grim Reaper. Well, could be, but I think her biggest thing was she wanted, she wanted to be able to say, okay, because they all got hit with the colorist claims. They want to blame Candace. Candace is the reason for them being called out as colorists. And then when she doubled down at the reunion and made her point, then it was like, oh no, we can't beat these claims. We can't beat the colorist charges. So what we're going to do is make it is make the case that her mouth is so heinous that she shit she needs to go because she says things and it makes people attack her. We sat there at that reunion when they had Onika on there and they were telling her that oh Mia basically should have been should have beat her up. Giselle was like, oh if she beat you then that's gonna be your fault because you said her mama was low budget the same Mia who sat up there and participated in calling Wendy's mama a witch, even pointing to a crow and saying, is that your mother? And so now here we go again with the, oh, Candace's mouth goes too far. She cuts to the white meat. And then the minute you get caught in a lie, then we get black scent and colloquialisms and dialect. Ashley, we see through you, darling. Jackie say, Ashley can lie without opening her mouth. Sometimes she lies with her eyes. I don't know about that. I only speak about the lies I hear. Yeah, she's definitely adjacent. She's clear adjacent. She's not black adjacent. She's clear adjacent. Okay? You say until the, those women let her know she's other. Yeah, she don't mind being other. She's just not black. Hey, E. Davis, thank you for being 76. Malaya says the chin gets bigger when she lies. Oh, dear Lord. Is that how that works? Anissa Michelle Hey say, and Ashley is a better example of light, of the light-skinned pretty girl privilege than Giselle. Is she? Because she's not pretty. The two wildfires she started this season are the perfect examples of this. I mean, I, I just think it's light-skinned. I, I don't see anything pretty going on with Ashley. She's never been pretty. She's always looked very unfortunate. Thank you for being 76, Kenya 330. I appreciate it. All right, Christian Key in the house. All right. Say the TMZ footage was Candace's alibi. Right. Right. That's what saved her. That's what saved her. Is because if who, whoever sold that video to TMZ was really looking out for Candace, whether they knew it or not. Hey, hey, Anil. She's not even mediocre. She just looks sad and mangy. She looks like one of them dogs you put a cone around their head so they don't scratch. That's what it gives. Miriam Sanflor says, the sad part is a lot of the audience will co-sign the colorism. They do. They do. And it's because a lot of our people are sick. And then we have the other people who watch, who absolutely gravitate and are more closely aligned with and more closely identified to the ones who have more proximity to them. Hey, Lady T, thank you for being 82. All right. Angela Davis, you too, sis. I'm glad you're here. Light skin doesn't always mean, light skin oftentimes does not mean pretty. Your complexion don't help you. Either you're pretty or you're not. Now, that's just that on that. I don't care if you light, medium, dark, lemon, yellow, plum, purple, you either pretty or you not. Your complexion will not save you. <laughs> you either, you know what I mean? That's just one of those things that we can't do nothing about. <laughs> we, you know what I mean? You kind of get the arrangement of your features is just what you get, what you get. All of us, all of us, we just get whatever we get. You know, some people say you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Okay. But the fact that she felt the need to come back and make that statement to explain to us why she asked if the camera was down was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Like, girl, you are a liar. It's real interesting to me. Why is it that your friend waited until you asked if the camera was down to run over there? Think about it, y'all. She been there all night. All night, that thing was standing there. All night, the entire event. While Candace 
Wendy and Kiana were watching the fashion show and picking at those dreadful clothing. We saw that thing sitting over there, like just watching them while they picking at the clothes. Nobody mentioned her name. No one looked in her direction. It was, it was almost like she was irritated just because they were not, they, they literally paid her dust. Like it was a whole fashionable pretty girl squad. And they were like, and the, you know, forget those ch those chicks over there like there was no energy to that side of the room that side of the room actually looked dull it didn't look fun at all if, if we being honest so she had all night like let's really think about this thing logically grover had all night long she did grover had all night Once the fashion show ended, Grover didn't walk up. They cut the scene out with Wendy talking to me, which I thought that was very interesting. Something went, there was some kind of back and forth and they showed us this on the trailer. But then when it came time to show the episode, we didn't get that. And someone on Twitter made an excellent point. They cut that scene out. Hey, Leah Aries, thank you for being 84. They cut that scene out only to put in a scene with Giselle's mouthpiece, Cal, or the criminal who makes her look as bad as she looks, telling, you know, saying, telling these ladies that Candace needs to be ready to be attacked because she says what she wants to say online. But we cut out that whole scene with Wendy and Mia because something went on where Wendy ends up, y'all, y'all remember that from the trailer where there was this whole scene of Wendy saying to Mia, but I still sleep with my husband and you don't. And that was cut out. So all of that had time to happen. There was time for Mia to come tell the ladies, oh, Giselle, daddy is sick and y'all need to be concerned about him. She didn't walk over then. Like there was so many opportunities. So it's like Ashley can tell this story all she wants about, I said, are the cameras down? you know, as it relates to playing some music that had not been cleared by Bravo. While that is true, girl, that wasn't your reason. Because it's extremely coincidental that as soon as you ask, are the cameras down? Are we wrapped? Are we good? Then Grover goes charging over because the mics were still on. So see, apparently you forgot to explain to your facially challenged friend that even though the cameras were down, the mics were still attached. You didn't tell her to wait until the cat till the mics were off too. Cause we heard the conversation. So let's talk about what they said in the episode. Remember Ashley was like, well, I don't know what happened as though she wasn't there when she clearly was, we saw her. She was the one who literally grabbed, Grab the bottle. Hey, J. J Delaray. She say Ashley full of stuff. Yes, she is, baby. Full of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, her facially challenged friend. Her facially challenged friend. And so she was the one that, um, hey, Poetic Lyrics, thank you for being 85, um, who pulled the bottle out of Candace, Candace's hand. She was in the middle of the fray. She was not on the other side of the room. She was in the middle of the fray. And when her other hood rat friend with the orange blazer, not orange, I'm sorry, that lime green chartreuse blazer situation dress on with the ponytail, that one, um, when she was grabbing Kiana's hair to yank her to the floor, Ashley was even trying to grab her and pull her back. So she was in the middle of it. But remember, on the show, she said when they were trying to set up Candace, um, that she said that y'all had been talking about her, that Wendy and Candace had been talking about her and calling her names. And so that's why she confronted her. They, she claimed that they were doing that during the fashion show. Mind you, the camera showed us what was being said during the fashion show. They were picking at those ugly clothes. They were not saying anything about that creature. Nobody. That's number one. But what we heard on the microphone, on the audio, 
was very clear. What we heard on the audio was um what we heard on the audio was her asking her about what she said online. She didn't mention anything. Oh, y'all, you know, I can't I, y'all was sitting over there talking about me tonight. That girl never said that. She never said it once. Never said it once. Hey, Patricia Joaquin, thank you for being 90. Why didn't she say that during the audio? Let me see if I can pull that audio up real quick because I want y'all to hear what was said and what Ashley claimed was said. See, this is why I keep saying, and I know some of you wanted to give her give Ashley the benefit of the doubt that she didn't set this up or that she wasn't a part of it in some way. She absolutely was. She absolutely was. And when we, I want y'all to hear this audio. I want y'all to hear this audio because the audio says everything. The audio says it all. Every bit of it. Hold on. I opened the wrong app. Because I want y'all to hear this again. Hey, Hood Star, thank you for being 94. But it's just, you know, I think people get amnesia or they think we have amnesia. I heard what you said. This girl said nothing. And I mean nothing. At all. And I mean at all about y'all were talking about me tonight. She literally said, literally, what she said was, you were talking about me online. It's coming. Let's go. Let's hear it. Listen now. Are the cameras down yet? Are the cameras down yet? Then listen. Mike's still on. Candace. Is there anything you and I need to talk about? You called me Sesame Street. You didn't say any of that in front of me. Right. Okay. We didn't hear anything about, about y'all been talking about me all night. We didn't hear anything about y'all been, you know, whispering, y'all were pointing at me. We didn't hear anything like that. All we heard was Sesame Street. You call me Sesame Street, but you don't have anything to say while I'm here, right? So when were they talking about you? Ashley was a part of this. Ashley was a part of this. And I'm going to just tell you what was interesting to me and what is, is clearly still interesting to me. And we're going to move on to Mia and her crap. Because Team Yellow is disgusting. But what's interesting to me is that no one is mentioning the other friend in the green jacket. 
why are we pretending that we're not talking about like that we didn't see two people go on the attack? Why are we pretending that? I think y'all told me that girl's name is Sydney. So I saw today that her Instagram um, comments, she's turned her Instagram comments off. But Ashley is not even addressing her. Ashley is trying to make this entire thing about Deborah. And she's getting away with only mentioning one friend when you clearly had two friends that were on the physical attack that night. Brandon Martin said, I watched the replay of your morning breakfast live. You're beautiful, radiant skin and all. Oh, thank you, boo. Thank you for being number 97. I appreciate you. Yes, y'all. Send them buttons up. Okay. Um, so this is what's going on. Like, why are we not mentioning that girl? And I think that Ashley is strategically only mentioning Deborah because she knows if she addresses the fact that two of her cohorts, two of her cohorts came there and proceeded to physically attack people who are on the cast, then there's no way to beat the setup charges. Like you set that girl up. You intended for her to be physically attacked. All of Team Yellow was aware of it, including Big Reese, their mascot. And they were already prepared to pretend as though you were absolutely right in what you were doing. Your friend Grover was right in attacking her. And it's all Candace's fault because of her mouth, which is real ABC 123 elementary. Evie says, Sydney tried to jump in. I don't think she was supposed to get in it. Maybe. Maybe, but why is she not mentioning her? You know what I'm saying? If it's as simple as she wasn't supposed to get in it or whatever, she wasn't a part of it in any way, why wouldn't you just mention it? Why are we pretending like Sydney wasn't a part of it or, or Sydney didn't commit a heinous act? Sydney, by her grabbing the back of Key on his head and pulling like that, what if that girl's ankle had got twisted behind her or snapped or something on her way down? What if, you know what I'm saying? She banged the back of her head on the edge of a chair or something and ended up dead or paralyzed what if but we're not mentioning sydney at all and that is a problem for me that's a problem for me why are we not mentioning the person who committed something that was like unprovoked nobody was touching her she was not in any danger there was no threat to her being. She was not defending herself. She was not even hitting back after hitting. She wasn't even in the altercation. She closed the space to put herself close to the altercation so that she could grab and commit that malicious, intentional act. And nobody is mentioning Sydney. That's a problem. Evie said, I think they thought Deborah could handle Candace, but didn't count, didn't account for old girl. Absolutely not. Yes, Grover wore fighting clothes. Grover wore freaking fighting clothes. Okay? So, you know, that's that on that. So let's talk about Mia Thornton. We don't know this hoe. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. We don't know her. We don't know her. Okay? This girl lies way too comfortably. And this time, I believe that Gordon is helping her. And at first, I was sitting there like, nah, Gordon wouldn't be just lying like that. And I said, wait a minute, Nitra, stop. Hold on. Gordon has done this before. Y'all might say, Nitra, when did you see Gordon doing this before? Y'all remember after she attacked the good professor in Miami? You know what I'm saying? And they lied on Peter. And then they got angry because Peter made it clear that nothing inappropriate had ever taken place between he and Dr. Osefo. And, you know, we already knew better than that. But after he made it clear, Mia then proceeded to lie against Peter and um, Gordon jumped in and backed her up with her foolishness. Y'all remember that? Y'all don't remember that? Because I do. I remember it very well. I remember very well what happened. Gordon jumped in that. Malaya says D boring and Sydney need to be in prison. They do. They do. They absolutely need jail time. I'm going to get all the comments. Say Gordon got me with it. If you want fair, go to the carnival. He didn't get me with that. He didn't get me with that. Y'all were excited about that. I, I wasn't. I, I wasn't. And I'm, I'm thoroughly unimpressed. And the more I think about it, something ain't right. Now, let me tell y'all why something ain't right. 
Okay, let me get poetic lyrics comment first. Say, if it's not, it's not as if it's a secret that Candace called her Sesame Street. All of a sudden, she wanted to address it after Ashley made sure filming was done. Right, right. Let me grab a few more. Debbie Garcia says, Sydney knew Grover was getting that beat down. And was. And was. Jackie says, I believe you, sis, on this one. I'm, I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. Yeah, he did. He jumped in that. He jumped in that. You remember? That's my wicked. Wicked said, oh, yeah, now I remember. That's my boo. That's my boo. Tiger Eye Chronicle, hey, boo, said, I've been saying this for days. Why is no one talking about Sydney? Okay. And Miriam is saying, RHOP is turning into love and hip hop. Bravo is going to pump and dump Mia. Well, they should, because it looks like that's the lifestyle she's accustomed to anyway. But now let me tell y'all why I feel like some lying has gone on. So now we got we to gotta go back. Y'all know it's my favorite place to go. So just go ahead. Hey, Koku, thank you for being like number 104. Y'all say it with me in the chat, please. Y'all know where we about to go. Y'all know where we going. So type it in the chat at the count of three, okay? Where are we going, y'all? Back down memory lane. We going back down memory lane. Okay, we going back. Yes, we are. So listen, listen. Mm? That's right, mama baby. See, my, my baby knew exactly where her mama was going. Back down memory lane. Mm -hmm. We ain't gotta go too far. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie you know, she, she hit her chorus. So did Brandon. That's what I'm talking about. Quiet Storm. Our little mama, she hit the chorus. Okay, Leah. All right. Queen. Hello. Everybody know. It's, it's many, it's many Ripperton time. It's many Ripperton time. We got to go back down memory lane. Yes, we do. Thank you, D. Sarah Tina's Cloud Nine. God's anointed daughter. Okay. All right, Debbie. That's where we going. Mm-hmm. Now, it was this season. I do recall this season, some episodes back. You know, this got to be one of the longest seasons in Potomac history. But it was further down the road, back that way, huh? where Mia was talking to the necromancer. Mm-hmm. Neckbone, what y'all call her. Mongoose, what I call her. She was talking to her and remember they was having a conversation about the IUI. Remember that? Y'all don't remember that? Put a one in the chat if y'all remember them talking about that. That conversation about the IUI. Put the one in the chat if y'all remember it. Mm-hmm. And she said to Nick Bone, she said that they had to do that in order to get the same child that they are now claiming they don't know who the daddy is. They, she said, Mia, the large Hispanic gentleman herself, she said they had to do IUI in order for them to get that child, Jeremiah. That's that turkey based the baby. That's when they take the man's genetic material and squirt it up in there to inseminate the woman. Mm-hmm. Because, see, that's what Neckbone was saying she needed to do in order to get a baby from the Mohawk. The village tout from Emo State that she's married to. And when they had that conversation, she said that, that they had to do I-U-I to get Jeremiah. Now, y'all know I don't hold too many conversations about people cheering because you would, I, I would advise you not to hold too many conversations about mine. But this time, this, this here time, we're going to hold this conversation because this heifer done told two different stories. Leah say them craters in Mia face done suck the air out of her brain. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You, she just done lied to Satan and confused her. 
Miriam say G and Mia scene was to be level acting is at best. Mm hmm. Say, wow, Mia tell lies based on who she talking to at the time. Ridiculous. Mm hmm. Jackie say, I remember that like it was yesterday. Okay. I'm just letting you know something ain't right. Even say, and now they don't know who the daddy is. Right. How you don't know who the daddy is and you had somebody squirting up in there? How? How? And so I say, if you went ahead, I, you, I, to get little Jeremiah, wouldn't Gordon nobody, wouldn't he had to been the one delivering materials to you in a cup? So how would y'all not know who the baby belongs to if you ain't even get the baby the regular way? That's a guaranteed I know who the hell the daddy is, ain't it? DB say, I'm so glad I'm working from home. You got me crying. Lord, don't cry. Dry your eye. Here comes your mother with those two little guys. Okay. My bad. Had a lottie daddy moment. Quiet Stone say she was either lying in or she lying now. Now that's what I'm talking about. I don't know whether she lying in or lying now, but she lying some kind of a way. She lying some kind of a way. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. And I, you know, at the end, for me, let me quote, let me quote Glorilla. Okay. At the end of the day, the day got the end. Okay. At the end of the day, the day got the end. You can't keep lying and think that your lies ain't going to crash into each other. Somebody ain't telling the truth by something and i feel like y'all lying by oh you didn't know who the baby daddy is because they guarantee your check on that show i believe gordon is helping you i believe that that's exactly what y'all intended to do is what y'all doing put a story out there to get, guarantee you to come back and that's why they put her in that front chair because of all this mess she don't know who the baby daddy is she finna get a divorce she been sleeping with this man the whole time and you and all of that like i just don't trust none of it and it, it it looks like gordon is helping her lie like that's what it's giving to me gordon trying to help her stay on the show he sure is he sure is that's that's what it's giving to me dsa mia shouldn't shouldn't have been gargling ba well honey if she had been gargling them she wouldn't have them walking around him eating meat and wearing shoes jackie say wouldn't it be something if it was dunkle's baby girl girl kelly say didn't you say he was diagnosed with prostate cancer during season seven at the reunion but me have been sleeping with ink for 10 years right all of it the lies is crashing they crashing leah say also she did say that when she married gordon she had more money inheritance yeah right then Gordon, well then ma'am, you told Ashley that you might have married. Yeah, we already covered. That was a lie. We we got that part. But we talking about this in here, baby now. Right. They need coins for the family. And he helping her lie to make this thing stick. And it just ain't sticking. My sister on the phone. She says she don't do anything but lie. She's bilingual. English is the second language. Lie as the first. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. I can't. That's her English is her second language, Lord. Say so Mia's definition of no integrity. She is, but in reality, <laughs> that's what that, that's what that nut said, y'all. But in reality, this is what she's getting away with. And this is what Bravo is promoting. And I just want y'all to pay close attention. I said it before. I'll say it again. I hate to keep referencing the ladies on RHOA, 
but we have to because these were black women that that they the first black housewives franchise on bravo dare i say the housewife franchise that made them the most money at a point and really put them on the map but literally phaedra repeated a rumor was labeled a liar everybody ran with it she was vilified for it and you know drug to the to the depths of hell she just kept herself up because she's educated and accomplished I don't necessarily like Phaedra. I didn't like her when she first came on the show, but the truth's the truth. And a lot don't care who tell it. Okay. So when we start talking about Mia telling all these lies, she's actually being rewarded for it. She's being treated like some kind of darling for the lies that she tells. And nobody will ever convince me that that's about anything other than you not black. So you can do that especially if you're playing with black people you can do that you can lie you can lie on them you can lie about your situation you can lie about everything that comes out of your mouth and it, it will be celebrated it'll be cute it'll be funny you will be the darling we'll give you first chair at the reunion hell they might give her a raise but i do believe mia has done it again and this time gordon is an accomplice. Gordon is an accomplice. Just saying. So anyway, now that we got that out the way, let's get into this Baltimore bridge situation, the Francis Scott Key Bridge at the Baltimore port coming that's, you know, right, you know, right by the Baltimore port. Because it's not at the port, but you know, you you know what I'm saying. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So yeah, just like little white lies are considered excusable. Right. Um, so let's get into it. So what took place with that bridge? We're talking about not barely, not even 48 hours ago. Like this was something that was extremely shocking. I don't think anybody was prepared for it. Um, except the people who possibly orchestrated it, right? So let's talk about, first of all, what we know. Because y'all know I got my notes. Got my notes. Mm. I had to get another notebook. This time I got a composition book. So my notes are prepared. My notes are ready. We're going to talk about what we know first, and I'm going to talk about what I observed um, socially, because right now I feel like social media is kind of like the final frontier, right? And the reason I say it's the final frontier is because the social media spaces is, is basically where a lot of the independent journalism goes on now. It's a place where people share ideas, where people are not talking and listening in an echo chamber. This is the place where, this is a place where people who want to control minds are fighting for the right to censor your speech. They're fighting for the right to stop you from even telling the truth about what they've done, let alone have an opinion. You had better not be pointing out what they're doing and this is where a lot of the psyops take place. I mean, when I say psyops, I mean psychological operations as far as trying to control the way people not only speak, but the way you think. So one thing I noticed right off the bat with this was Democratic leaders and leftist or what y'all would call liberal platforms and, and content creators that are liberal, right? They ran to their prospective platforms and immediately start saying, if you don't believe it's an accident, you're a conspiracy theorist. This is stupid. This it's like, what are you doing? We don't know anything yet. Why would that be your immediate response? Like that was red flag number one. And I'm going to say this, and I've said it all the time. 
the devil always overplays his hand and he makes people pay attention. He may, he'll make you pay attention doing too much. So this was one of those times just doing too much. It made me pay attention. It was like, why y'all running to, I just thought it was weird. Like social media platform, your first thing you do. So there's this one guy, he's on Instagram. He's called Tizzy. I think he's a, he's a really, really fat, clear man with a beard. He kind of looks like a dirty Santa Claus. And I, I I watch his platform from time to time because he will point out people who are doing things that are like discriminatory or attacking minorities and stuff. And I think that part is cool. Like he points out stuff and like tries to help people identify, like find this person so they can be brought to justice or identify this person so we can find out like how to contact the authorities or whatever. So it's like, I pay attention. You know what I mean? Because unlike some people, I'm not fanatical about nothing like i believe in right and wrong and anybody can be right or wrong at any given time so it's just what it is so he i happened to scroll past him yesterday and he did one of those posts oh you know somebody said it was a black swan event and oh ha 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 and i'm sitting there like but do you even know what a black swan event is this is like the definition of a black swan event so I said, okay, why is it funny that somebody, that's like saying, oh, he said water's wet, ha, ha, ha. So I was like, why are we doing that? What is, like, what is behind this? I start asking questions, like, I think. And so I asked the question in the chat, because he's like, oh, you, you thinking that, and that's, you're a conspiracy theorist, and that's stupid. And I'm like, so I simply commented, I said, but we don't know if it was deliberate or not like we don't know and i just thought that was an innocent statement and people came to attack immediately oh you're stupid why are you i said hey why are you insulting a person that you don't know because you cannot control random adults on social media and what they think like that's that's sad and so another one says well if we don't know then why are you thinking that it's that it could be delivered. I said, because I have a brain and I'm allowed to think. So I, I started really paying attention. Like, wait a minute, y'all don't want people to think at all. We're not supposed to think. I said, oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna show y'all what I done dug up. Since, since since people went to doing stuff like that, I'm like, okay, this is heavy. This is some heavy psyops. Brandon said, I'm suspicious. How are so many people out at 1:30 in the morning on a Tuesday filming a bridge? Number one, how are they able to alert? To stop traffic in less than 90 seconds after the crash. Well, they got a mayday from the ship. So that's, you know, that, that could be a reason. Even if it's not legit, at least it's something that they can offer as a reason, right? Say so it, it, it went against their, their programming, right? And, you know, I glitch. I can't be programmed. I think the way I think everything is a straight line because the straight line is the shortest distance. You know, your mama's all logic. I don't have time for emotions. Keep them to yourself. But anyway, um, I'm going to show y'all what I saw. So since they did what they did, I dug. And so once I dug, y'all, I saw some things. I'm going to read you a list of what we do know. And then I'm going to show I'm going to show you the evidence that I got. OK, from all the footage that was taken, everything that was pulled up. OK, so this is what we do know. Not what we guess, what we think. These are the things that we do know. We know that both appear to lose power, not once, but twice before the collision. We know that the boat hit one pylon and the bridge came down. We know that six people are missing, presumed dead. We know that the boat sent out a mayday, and they said that is the reason that they stopped traffic. We know that Biden rushed out to say it was an accident. How could you know that when there's not an investigation? But that's what he rushed out to say. And then I'm going to let you hear what the mayor of Baltimore had to say, which was even more suspicious, right? Um, Because he said to focus on, don't focus on the cause, focus on the people who are missing at the time. We also know that shipping out of the port of Baltimore will slow almost to a halt. Okay. 
very suspicious. Right. How the hell would he know? Like we know Biden don't even know if he got on socks when he leave the house. But magically, you know, this was an accident and there's been no investigation. He said that the, the FBI don't think it even showed up yet. And he said it was an accident. How the hell do you know, Joe? How do you know? You're the same man we saw calling a dead woman to a podium. Jackie, anybody seen Jackie? But you know this was an accident. Okay, Joe. So what else do we know? We know that local businesses are going to suffer due to the loss of important of this being an important commuter route because a lot of not just cargo, but passengers left out of that area. Um, we also know that the Maryland governor, the governor of Maryland, is saying that this repair is going to be a long time build, a long term build. We know that the Port of Baltimore is known for handling coal, sugar and specialized vehicles like tractors and cranes. So this is not these are not small ticket items. And we know that this will likely impact the shipping along the entire eastern seaboard. These, this is what we know. So let's talk about this, this term, black swan event. It sounds dramatic because y'all know our clear counterparts love, they love dr dramatic, you know, phrasing. They love dramatic words. They love to make things sound sinister and ominous instead of just saying this was unexpected. Okay. Um, You say, how the hell would a train be there? <laughs> Wait, he said in speech by train or boat, child, because he's special. He's very special. So they say they know what to do about this economy. Yeah, they, yeah exactly. They know exactly what to do. Jim Bunny say, yep, Domino Sugar Factory is located there. Exactly. Exactly. But hold on. So let's talk about this term black swan event. Literally, all that means is that something is happening that blindsided you. It was unforeseen. It's something that is impactful and that you really can't get around it. Now, usually it refers to something financial or economic. Not something that is, you know, like this. But I guess this this actually could be considered financial or economic because it's about to hit us financially and economically. OK, so black swan event using the dramatic term like, you know, y'all people dramatic. So I don't care about them using a dramatic term, but this is absolutely by nature of what that term means. A black swan event like hello. Good night. So. Let's talk about what I dug up. <laughs> I love it. So there's this um, General Mike Flynn was on Twitter. And sometimes I like to watch the, the crazy clears because the crazy clear, clear, clear people, sometimes they say stuff. That'll make you look into something else. And I like to watch all of them. I watch the crazy Dems. I watch the crazy Repubs. I watch the crazy Libs. I watch the crazy the conservatives. I watch all of them because I want to know who the hell is saying what. So he said something that led to something else. And I saw it and I saw another independent journalist that was looking at something too concerning this. So he said, check the harbor masters. Don't worry about necessarily the boat. Check the harbor masters. And that's who he was saying. That's who needs to be, you know, interviewed or whatever. And I said, OK, that's one way to go. But by the time an independent journalist gets to the harbor masters, I can guarantee you the government will have gotten to them first and they ain't going to tell you nothing. OK, but I did find out. And y'all can pull this up on your own phones, email, I mean, um, computers, laptops, tablets, whatever you got that's connected to the internet. And if you go to BalticShipping.com, Baltic, B-A-L-T-I-C, BalticShipping.com, and you should happen to put in the Dolly, 
because that's the name of the boat what crashed into the pylon what brought down the francis scott key bridge d-a-l-i like dalai lama mm -hmm. the dolly mm -hmm. and um they're gonna tell you who the shipmasters are on the boat now when you go there and you pull it up you're gonna see the shipmasters it's two of them one of them is a fella from india and that's what's all online oh the indian the indian the indian messed up the indian this and people saying they're talking about the indian the indian and the indian people saying don't be blaming us saying stuff because the governor say we heroes and i'm like y'all about to miss the boat it was two shipmasters only one of them was an indian let me show y'all something i'm gonna drop my face but i want y'all to see this and then we gonna talk I'm going to drop my face. Y'all get a good look at this, and we're going to talk about what's behind my head. Mm hmm. Now, what y'all saw at the top was the Indian fellow. But did y'all notice something about the one right up under him? He's also the shipmaster on the ship. It was two of them. Did y'all notice anything about him? He didn't look like no Indian, did he? Did he? Just tell me. If he looked Indian to you, I'll just shut up and close my notebook, and we can all go back to what we was doing before. He don't look like no Indian, do he? Mm-mm. Let me read his name. You know, I got to use my eyes. I got to zoom in with my eyes on a smaller device where I can see. Okay. Because y'all know TT eyes ain't what they used to be. Okay. So let me read what I can read about this in here, man. Okay. Now, this fella, not only is he not Indian. He's a 52-year-old gentleman. And, and it don't say he's from India. It say he's from Ukraine. Then what it say? He's from Ukraine. Citizenship, Ukraine. Nationality, Ukraine. <laughs> That's what it say. Hold on. This him. He don't look Indian. And then when you see his nationality and stuff, what it say? Ukraine. So I say, why y'all trying to shove this down our throat? Talking about a India, India. They Indian. Indian fella wasn't the only one that's supposed to be in the ship master on that dead gum ship. He wasn't the only one on there. It was two. And I feel as though if it was innocent, if it was completely innocent, why we didn't mention both of them? Why are we making it all about the Indian fella? Why are we doing that? Why? Even say, I wish you could hear the uh-uh I just did. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So y'all definitely crashed it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Quiet Storm said he didn't look Indian a, a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so I always pay attention to what's being said and who the hell is saying and then i ask myself why you not mentioning it what you not mentioning it for even say they trying to cripple the american economy and we know the ukrainians 
is in Biden's pocket. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about a little bit more because I got more. <laughs> oh, I got more. Y'all know when I make it my business to dig, oh, the girl digs. When I make it my business to dig, the girl digs. So not only did that happen, apparently, I didn't know people be on Telegram. Now, I done had to get on Telegram before, like different jobs you may have. They'll tell you you got to be on Telegram because they're going to send messages or do meetings on Telegram or whatever like that. I didn't know people be on Telegram talking. Well, they do be on Telegram talking. The sound going in and out for you, DV? Is the sound going in and out now? Can y'all hear me? Let me know in the chat. But they be on Telegram talking. So apparently... There are Telegram channels that are Ukrainian. I didn't know that was a thing. Like, well, it's U Ukrainian folks. And so this is one of the posts in one of the Ukrainian Telegram rooms or whatever. Say not now, but it was. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe stream y'all want me to shut up, but you know, not right now. But this is what was on there. And the people done screen grabbed it and put it out. See if y'all can read that. So what it say is, it's a Ukrainian flag, an arm that's flexing. It said, G-U-R beauties, they work all over the world without hesitation. If you don't accept the aid package, then get it. Look forward to our surprises throughout Europe. We will teach you to defend democracy and help those who need it. This was yesterday they posted this. Yesterday. So I'm like, so... One or two things could be going on. It could be something to it, or it could be somebody trolling and trying to make them take responsibility for something, or it could be somebody from there who's actually trying to claim responsibility for it in a, in a means of trying to intimidate or provoke or antagonize the American citizens. So I said, okay, that ain't really a smoking gun. You know what I'm saying? That could be anything. That could be some board little clear boy who's 14 years old from America in there posting stuff like that could be anything. Right. So I said, okay, what else do we have that would say that this was for sure other than the stuff that just can't just, you know, what's the word that they use in court circumstantial stuff other than just circumstantial things. What else is a dead giveaway that something's not right here? So get past that, the, the telegram post and all that. Um, a pilot had, had to be on board. So I had to learn. I had to go learn what a pilot is. I had to go learn what a pilot is. So a pilot is somebody who works at the ports, right? And these people have to wait for a pilot to board their ship to navigate, to help them navigate in and out because they know the waterways. Apparently, this is something they do at every port. It's not just America, at foreign ports, domestic ports. This is something they do. So I didn't know what a pilot was until yesterday evening, but I now know what a pilot is. And a pilot has to be on board. So again, I'm like, this is somebody who knows the route. They do it every day, all day. Why would this happen? How could this happen? Okay. And... I'm going to just show y'all what we got about, about what, what happened, the actual impact itself. I uploaded the videos. I hope they play. Let me see if, if I can get them to play. Hold on. Especially since my connection is acting dumb. Especially since my connection is acting dumb. Like, I really don't know what's going on with it other than maybe them people really do want me to shut up 
And that could be the case. And it could be that I should, but I won't. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the GPS footage. And then I'm going to show you the live action footage, right? Whew. So let's start with this. I'm going to show you again. So what, what we're seeing there is the GPS footage showing exactly what happened. And we see in this one, I'm going to hit it again. What we're seeing in this one is the ship actually in course right before the power goes out. A sharp turn. See, it changes course and then it goes out. Changes course and then the power goes out. Um, Let's get... Which one is the longer one? I think this is the one I want to show next. Okay, so let's look at this one. All right. All right. So we're looking at it. The power has gone out. Power comes back on. Some smoke comes out the stack or whatever. And then they turn. Power goes out again. And the power comes back on. They turn a little bit more toward the pylon. And... Boom, shakalaka. Boom goes the dynamite, right? Okay. So that's what happened. Now, that's what happened now. But now let's take a look at this one. This one's a little bit better shot of exactly what went on. I think it sped up a little, but let's look. It sped up. But look how they made that sharp turn toward it. They were going nowhere near that thing, and they turned toward it. Look now. So you got to ask yourself, why would they, like the power goes out. When the power came back on, I'm, I'm going to play that again. They made a sharp turn toward the pylon and then the power goes out again. Watch this again. Y'all pay close attention. When the lights are out, that means the power's out. When the lights come on, that means the power's back on. Look at it again. Lights on, lights off, lights on. Like they correct it to make sure they hit it. Y'all saw that, right? Am I tripping or did did we or did we see what we saw? Hey, Couture Bay. Hey, thank you for being like number 128. So y'all did did y'all see what I saw or am I tripping? When the lights first went out, they were coming nowhere near that fragonacle pylon. Nowhere near nowhere near it nowhere near it when the lights came back on they literally corrected to head toward the freaking pylon like am i tripping am i bugging it looks like a freaking purposeful accident to me something ain't right I'm just saying, I, I'm i not the smartest Negro in the room on any day of the week, but I'm not dumb enough that I that my eyes don't work. Like, I, I know how to process the information that I'm looking at. That's the smoke coming from the stack. So it's like, if the smoke is coming from the stack, if anybody knows more about boats than me, please let me know. I would assume, and I'm only assuming, and I'm saying out loud that I do not know. Okay? I don't know. Okay? But I would assume it's because you're gunning the engine. And when you gun the engine and the smoke came out the stack, you turn toward the thing you hit. Why would you, like, on what day would you do that? Why would you do that? Quiet storm. Quiet storm. Thank you so much for the cash app. She sent me a cute cash app with the cake. She says, you know, they don't like when you're truthful. Let me send a heart and you show right about it. They want your girl to shut up and I just can't do it. 
I can't. Quiet Storm say, if you know the ship is malfunctioning, then why would you turn toward the bridge in the first place? Right. There were so many ways that could have went other than that way. Jim Bunny said, right. It was, was it, was a fire or something smoking intentionally? I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. These Serotinas say, right. Like one of the elders in the family used to say, something in the buttermilk ain't clean. And it ain't. Even say, literally, who turns toward a bridge? Let's look at it again. Let, let's, let's, let's be fair. Let's re-examine what we saw. Because then I got something else to show y'all that don't look right. Mm? Let's re-examine it. Let's give them a shot. lights off they turn the lights on aim toward it lights went off again they turn the lights back on and aimed and, and corrected their aim to make sure they struck it so i mean i'm not saying who did anything because i don't know i don't believe in lying unlike your politicians i don't believe in lying i can only say what i saw what i saw was the power went out, they were, the bridge was here, right? I have to be careful of my hands because y'all can't see. The bridge is here. When the power went out, they were heading this way. They The power came back on, they turned hard this way. It was like this way. And then the power went out. The power came on again, they corrected it and went dead in for it. Power goes out, boom. That's what I saw. We watched it several times. That's literally what I saw. My, from my experience, boats do not turn on their own. From my experience, boats absolutely do not turn on their own. They don't. Somebody has to be at the helm for a boat to turn. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't. Evie says, I mean, it don't look like they out of control of the boat. Right. They weren't. Because if it was out of control, it just would have rolled the currents. There's no way in hell. Boats don't bank hard. And that happens. It, it just doesn't work that way. Like, why would you do that? Why would anybody do that? I can't make no sense to, of it. I don't know who did it. I'm not going to lie on nobody. I don't know. Could have been either one of them, to be honest. But I'm just saying it's fishy that the one person that they're not mentioning is somebody who would have an interest or be upset at at, uh, at at us. You know what I'm saying? Like they've been eating off us for a minute and now they need some more bread. And we saying, well, our bread bad. And they know that it's a possibility that somebody could get in office that might not give them no bread. So, you know, I don't know. Jackie say, I saw what I saw and nothing can make me change my mind. This is not like the time they said we really didn't see Rodney Kane get beat. Yeah, yeah, you can't tell me I didn't see what I saw. My eyes work. Um, Say the fact that old boy Ukrainian is still the deal. I can't say that. I'm not going, you know, he could have, he could have been on the side of the angels, but I'm saying somebody somewhere did something that ain't right. Okay. Jim Money say it's eerie to me because I went sailing on a yacht back in 2021 and have the key bridge in the background. I mean, I'm just saying, but you wasn't there on that day. So that's a good day. Dollface say, you know how tugboats run? No, I don't. I literally just said I don't know how tugboats run. Did I ever say I was on a yacht or a tugboat? Let me help you out. Because, see, we're here to talk about what we saw not what we guess or any of that i've been very clear i do not know i've never driven a cargo ship i've never been on a cargo ship i don't know nothing about no cargo ship all i know is what i see now that's all i know is what i see okay so if you thought you were coming in here to have a liberal hissy fit baby you in the wrong place and i don't care if you're insulted i don't Cause we ain't here to talk about the truth. We're not here to defend nobody. We talk about 
What the hell? So, um, mods, get this trash out of here. Get this garbage out of my chat. Because we're just because we're black doesn't mean we don't have a right to think. We have a right to think. There are no shackles on our brains. If there's a shackle on your brain, then that would be a personal problem. That has nothing to do with us. Y'all get that trash out of my chat. Get it out. Right. Yeah, we know boats don't turn themselves. I don't care if you are black. You're black garbage. Get that garbage out my chat. ASAP. Yeah, they thought they came to argue. You're not arguing here. That's low class behavior. And I won't do it. I won't do it. Back to the projects you that you scurried from. Scurry back. Get them out. And I mean block them now. But anyway, I know what we saw. And it don't look right. Even look at that. The fact that they're sending people to places to try and argue with people who are thinking and looking for themselves and drawing conclusions for them. It's like, I'm not stupid. I know what I saw. Matter of fact, let me play it again. Something don't look right. I'm going to play it one more time. Since we had, you know, a bottom dweller come dragging in here with foolishness. Hard turns. Something don't look right. That's all I'm saying. Something don't look right. Something don't look right. And personally, I'm always insulted when people insult our intelligence. Like, we're supposed to accept what you say when what you're saying don't make no sense. We're supposed to accept what you say and tell our eyes they lying. My eyes ain't lying to me. I don't have big, pretty eyes like my daughter, but I swear these here work. These work. They ain't no show pieces, you know. They not the prettiest eyes you're going to lay your eyes on. Mm -mm. They real regular looking. Real regular. They don't even open up that wide. But I swear my eyes are great. My eyes are great. And I know what I saw. Okay. Now, Jackie say, this is what's so disturbing about this doggone app. They already don't want us to think for ourselves. That's a disaster coming. Well, that's, that's basically the people who are in charge now. They don't want you to think. And they use people like that thing that came in here to say, oh, well, I'm black. So I'm telling you, don't think. Trust Massa. You out your mind. I would invite you to kiss my tail, but I might catch up. Tish say, I love this channel. Always real, true Aquarius. And you know it, baby. So let's talk about what else going on. Because there's more to this. That's disturbing. Okay. Now. There's another independent journalist by the name of Laura Logan. Now she has some interesting information. Laura asserts, and I don't know whether she's right, but this is what she is asserting concerning this. She asserts that the GPS systems in these boats are not encrypted. So I'm thinking, if that's true, if that's true, we don't know who could have possibly... Um, what do they call it now? They don't say technological warfare. It could have been a cyber attack of some sort. Someone could have hacked the system. Like, we don't know. We do not know whether they were hacked. We don't know whether someone on the boat was involved. We don't know whether the pilot was involved. Um, being that a pilot is supposed to be on there to, you know, help them navigate in and out of the ports. I don't know that the pilot would have had something to do with it. I don't know whether someone on the boat would have had to help, you know, hack the system. Like, I don't know. But there's too many holes. There's too many holes, too many loopholes. There's too many things that we simply don't know. And it's far too suspicious to me that 
everybody's rushing to tell us stop thinking. If y'all think that was an accident, that a letter person, somebody with no picture, we've never seen you before, we've never heard of you before, pops in our chat on our small channel to tell us to quit thinking. Oh, you're not an engineer. So you, girl, I don't care. Girl, boy, monkey, chicken, cat, dog. I don't care who you are. Zebra, aardvark, whatever. You can't tell me not to think. I don't care what I didn't go to school for. My parents sent me to school well enough that I can reason. I have critical thinking skills. I have great eyesight. I always ate my carrots like my mama told me. I know what I saw and I know what don't make sense. So when they start sending people to run, even to a small channel like ours, like think about it. We ain't never seen that person before. We ain't never seen you before. But you pop up in this small channel. Like, I've never seen you on any of the other channels in this sector. Like, certain people I'll see, and I may not have seen you on this channel, but I might have been on Gabor's channel. I might have been popped into Sherelle's world. I might have seen you somewhere before. But when people start popping up and I ain't never seen your name before, who the hell are you? If y'all think for one minute that those people are not sending plants, y'all crazy. Y'all crazy as I am, but not in a fun way. That ain't normal. <laughs> Why are these people rushing to tell us to stop thinking? Why that? Why are they so threatened by us using our brains? Why is that bothering them so much? Why would that bother you? It's almost like that movie, Don't Look Up. Why is it so important for us not to think? Why is it so important for us not to pay attention to what the hell goes on? Why is that important? Why is that a thing? That's all I'm saying. Um, I just feel as though it's some funny things going on. So I want to show you something else because this is not something that I'm saying. This is just something that has been asserted. Someone, people have made the assertion that there were also explosions on that bridge. I don't know, but I'm going to let y'all see for yourselves and allow everybody to draw your own conclusions because I don't believe in telling people don't think. I, I, I actually encourage you to think. You ain't got to even come to the same conclusion I came to. I just want you to think. I want you to draw a conclusion for yourself, take in information and decide for yourself what you think is possible. Say when they go to try to silence, they full of it. Oh, yes. And silencing me. Good Lord. My mama couldn't even do that. I can't nobody silence me. Good luck with that one. LaPree say we might mess around and figure out something. Right. That's why they running to say stop thinking. Vets say critical thinking is important. Whoever that that was didn't even give an alternate theory, just trying to stop you. No theory. Just stop thinking. <laughs> Boy, y'all show scared of black folks with brains. It's oh Lord. It's jarring. Queen say they want to keep us sleep. Not happening, partner. Yeah, no. So I'm going to show y'all this, and I want y'all to pay attention. It's like three different spots where I can see something light up, but I'm not sure whether that's legit or not. I'm going to just say that. Not that I don't believe that the things that are, you know, look like there's something explosive happening is happening. What I'm not sure of is if that's like wiring that's on the bridge that, you know, like maybe when it snaps, it sparks or it gives a small explosion when it snaps. Like, I don't know, but this is what some people are thinking. I'm not saying I believe or don't. I'm not sure about this one. So I'm going to just put it out there for y'all to think for yourselves and see for yourself and draw your own conclusion. Okay. Okay. So look right there. Explode. Something exploded. And there, there was an explosion. So I think those may be cables. Some people are saying, 
Some people are saying that those are explosions. I feel like there's like wiring or like electrical wiring in the bridge that maybe like when it snaps, it does it. I don't know. I don't know. Like on that one, I don't know. Like I can't even, that's just more evidence that's out there. Y'all draw your own conclusion. But for me, I think it's just like there's electrical wiring in there. And I think that maybe when it collapsed at certain points, the wiring snapped and made a small explosion or a big spark or something. I think that's what they're seeing. I don't think those are explosions. I think what we saw is actually what took it down. I think the boat hitting the pylon is what took the, the bridge down. And I don't think it was that, but that's, you know, some people are looking at it. And like I said, there's so many angles of this catastrophe. Um, so it might be cables. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I believe it's just the electric cables in there because I know there's electricity on there because they got to have lights on it. You know, LaPree said, I thought it was the lighting on the bridge. That's what I thought too. Some of the more crazier people were like, oh, it's an explosion, but I don't, I don't think so. But I like, you know, with, with a situation like this, I would prefer to present all the information and let people draw their own conclusions. Because like I said, I'm not a fan of telling people, stop thinking. <laughs> I'm never going to tell you, you stop that thinking. Did I catch you thinking? Because that's what we're getting right now. We're getting a lot of, you better stop that thinking. I'm not a fan of it. And um, hey, Dana Cutler, thank you for being like number 132. But what I want to encourage you all when it comes to this situation is keep your eye on it. Very much keep your eye on it. Um, very much um, pay attention to the economic impact of this. Pay attention to the e economic impact. Coal is very much still an issue in the U.S. If you don't know, you better know. Sugar, absolutely. Sugar is used in a lot of the foods, especially these processed foods and pre-prepared foods that y'all buy. Um, that's going to have an impact. It's going to be an issue. Um, they're saying that a lot of the other ports are going to have to take in some of this traffic. Um, like it's going to be an issue. And with them, with the governor saying that it's a, um, it's going to be a long term build. That's telling me years. I don't believe it's going to be up in no in a year and a half, I think it's going to be years and years to repair what was done in like less than a minute, like less than a minute. It's going to take years to repair. Um, it's too many questions for me, too many questions for me, too many stop. You, you, you stop there thinking. And it's almost like a violent response to us thinking this time. And I feel as though that's a red flag. Oh, I didn't show y'all the video of the mayor of Baltimore, this Negro heavy on the K-N-E-E. -E. Let me show y'all him and what he had to say when people were just asking questions. Like asking questions and thinking at this point is giving me criminal offense. I wouldn't put it past these people to try to, legis to make legislation against thinking and arrest us for being thinkers. Like this is getting bad. But let me show y'all this real quick. It's, it's getting spooky. Not just bad, it's getting spooky. In my opinion, All right, so let me hook this up. Make sure y'all sign is y'all sound is up, okay? Yeah, Rick Party had it on his Instagram, so that's why I went back to him. 
How long is it going to take to rebuild this marriage? I think right, right now, sir, uh, listen, we shouldn't even be having that discussion right now. The discussion right now should be about the people, the souls, the lives that we're trying to save. Uh, there will be a time to discuss about a bridge and how we get a bridge back up. But right now, there are people in the water that we have to get out. And that's the only thing we should be talking about. How long is it going to take to rebuild this marriage? Mind you, mind you, this is, this is the kind of stuff that's going on. First of all, let's be, let's be clear. That reporter asked a pertinent question. Not only was it pertinent, it was a pressing question. It's a question that impacts the entire Eastern Seaboard, so many thousands of people. We shouldn't be talking about that. Why the hell shouldn't we be talking about how long it's going to take to get a bridge back up that supports people's livelihoods, their way of lives? Like, why is that something we're not allowed to talk about? Is it because you want us to just accept that there's going to be a huge negative impact to the economy and the lives and the livelihoods of those people? And just focus on the emotional aspect. Don't you dare focus on reality. These people are literally before our eyes telling us, do not think, do not worry about your survival at all. Let's worry about some people who already did. This is what we need to worry about. No, absolutely not. Because the people who are alive don't want to be dead. Brown style say, hey, everybody, I'm late. I was thinking the same thing about that mayor, but I thought I would sound elitist. No, you wouldn't. You just sound like you got a brain. That's it. Evie say, it's clear he's been told what to say. Why do you have an attitude about something that's a normal question? Mm-hmm. He gets jazzy at press conference. So he gets ignorant and ghetto at press conferences. Okay, got it. Got it. DV says, I think it was the timing of the question is still a rescue at that time. No. To, first of all, you should not be working as a public servant. You should not be holding an office as mayor, governor, senator, um, house of rep, president or anything if you cannot address all of the pertinent issues there's not one issue we only know you're supposed to be able to multitask you're supposed to be able to address all of the concerns of the people with, with incidents like this with something this big why are you incapable of addressing all of the issues that people have all of the concerns that people have if you are that inept and you're that incapable, you are that incompetent, well then, Sugar, why don't you resign? Why don't you just resign? Why are you there? That reporter asked a simple question that I would want to know, that many of us would want to know. Why is it that we go, we go straight to ignorant? First of all, your hair, sir. I'm just saying, we talk about the women, you, you are not exempt. First of all, your appearance. But your response of that's all we need to be worried about. That's ignorant. That's ignorant. Why are you, why are you doing that? Why do you think that's, that's acceptable behavior? Evie says he looks ghetto and dusty and acting like it. He is. Malaya said, you still here after my meeting? I am. Just for a minute. We finna go on a little bit. Since the upper heads told him he better not say nothing otherwise. Yeah, I, you know. I'll stay at my station in life, praise God. Because nobody's going to control my mouth, my brain. No one will tell me to be irrational or to be rude to people for thinking, for actually reasoning. Jan Bunny says, I'm in Prince George County, Maryland. Our mayor is not like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. DS says, I was confused when he started speaking like this, is like this is the mayor. Mm hmm. That's the mayor. That's the mayor. So, folks, there you have it. This is all we know. 
We have video. We, we see something clearly taking place here. We see something clearly taking place here. Um, lights off, lights on, aiming toward a pylon. We saw it. Um, we saw the GPS tracking of, of the, the, of the, you know, direction change. Hey, Coco C, thank you for being like number 137. Um, we, we see the response from certain leaders telling us, do not pay attention to what you see. Pretend you did not see it. Only think about the people that we, you know, off on the bridge, um, or the people who died on the bridge. <laughs> um, don't ask questions. They're telling you about one of the ship's masters, but they're suspiciously not mentioning the other ship's master. Um, we know that the bridge is down. We know that the, the governor says it's going to be a long-term bill. We know that the economy is going to be, um, I won't say irreparably impacted, but severely impacted. We know that it's going to impact ports all up and down the Eastern Seaboard for God knows how long. And we know that we're being told that it was an accident, even though an investigation has not been concluded. That's what we know. Um, so, yeah. Draw your own conclusions. Think for yourself. Don't allow anybody to put a gag over your mouth or handcuffs or shackles on your brain. Use it as you see fit. No one controls you. And um, that's it, y'all. That's all I got for it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let y'all get back to your regularly scheduled Wednesday. I just feel so much better now that I've gotten that off my chest. That was a lot. I had to get it off my chest. It was bugging me. It was really, really bugging me. So I had to say something. And thank y'all for bearing with me while we got through this. Because we had to. The Ashley of it all. The Mia Thornton and her lion tail of it all. And absolutely the Baltimore Bridge collapse of it all. Mm -hmm. So listen, y'all, you know what time it is. I'm going to have to ask you, if you did not hit the like button on the way in, please, please, pretty please with the cherry on top, remember to hit the like button on the way out. Hit your notification bell. Make sure that you click all. You will know every time. So you'll know every time we go live over here on this channel. Subscribe if you've not subscribed because you know we're happy to have you here. And if you want to join channel membership and put your crown atop your head, please make sure you hit the join button beneath the video or the membership link in the description box. Also in the description box, um, we have our link for our Royal Family Merchandise Store. So you can get your crown gear in classic black and gold or our new Emerald Crown design. We've also got the link for our Amazon storefront so we can all shop together. And my Amazon wish list if you want to send a girl a snack because you know I love a snack, okay? So listen, we got through this live. I appreciate you guys. Happy Wednesday. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Remember to be positive, be productive, encourage someone else, encourage yourself. And then just in case no one else says it to you, God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing at all that you can do about it. I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye.